Hey, this is Stevie Rochelle from Top and Metal Sludge, your favorite website. You are locked and loaded on the Music Mania Podcast. You ready for some screaming heavy metal? We rock! But the evil that men do lives on. We gonna bang your You are now listening to the Music Mania Podcast, brought to you by CD Warehouse in Gladstone, the number one hard rock podcast in the Midwest, featuring hard-hitting interviews with rock's living legends. And now, here's your host, Clint Schweitzer. And as has been the case all summer long, your money stays and plays with us right here on the Music Mania Podcast as we roll along. Summer may not be long for this world, but the Music Mania Podcast has your back all through the fall, winter, and spring. We're taking this thing all the way uh, back to next summer. I know you guys are already probably missing uh, the summer concert. The weather's still nice. Fall's going to be great. It is football season, so that means for me, I am out on the road filming a documentary, which is why there was no show last week. But to make up for that, I've got two guests this week, two huge guests, as we're going to be joined by Billy Idol guitarist Steve Stevens, one of the most versatile and influential guitarists uh, in rock. I mean, he has been with Billy Idol now for 36 years, one of the most versatile and one of the most influential uh, guitarists uh, in rock. And and Steve has been uh, collaborating with Billy Idol since uh, 1982, unbelievably, when Billy released his debut album. Billy Idol's on tour right now. They're going to be hitting the Uptown Theater in Kansas City on September 21st. Definitely going to be attending that show. I've got a lot of concerts coming up, so I'm going to have to batten down the hatches and really, uh, it's it's a crazy time for me, but I'm so appreciative of it. I love it. I'm out there traveling, doing what I love to do, but also having time to catch these shows and do these interviews for you guys here on the podcast, which is what it's all about here, because you already know the songs on this show, we tell you the stories, and that's what we're going to be doing with uh, Steve Stevens. He's going to talk about the Top Gun anthem. Top Gun 2 is uh, on the horizon. is filming now. We're going to talk to him about that. Maybe he will return to do uh, the anthem again, re- you know, re-record the, the anthem as he won an Academy Award uh, for the theme from Top Gun in 1986, which is obviously one of the most iconic movie themes of all time. And on this show, guys, we're also going to be talking with Udo Dirk Schneider. New album, Steel Factory, is out. Udo is out touring is going to be in Russia in Germany coming up this fall and winter on through the spring he's got a lot of tour dates coming up hope to get Udo back to America UDO in your face skull crushing heavy metal that's what Udo has always been one of the great voices in heavy metal of course you know him from Accept uh, his solo project Dirk Schneider and UDO he has always been a guy I've admired quite a bit. I've always just been such a huge fan of Accept. His work with them uh, in the early 80s, just tremendous stuff. You know, iconic songs like Balls to the Wall that are still heard today on, on Ozzy's Boneyard on XM Radio. So Udo is uh, going to be joining us from Germany coming up, talking about his son Sven being in his touring band and uh, the recording process for the new album Steel Factory, which is out now. Guys, check that out. So we have two big guests uh, coming up here. But before we get to our interview with Steve Stevens, i got to tell you about our sponsors, CD Warehouse in Gladstone, Missouri. For over 22 years, a staple of the Northland, guys, they buy, sell, and trade CDs, DVDs vinyl and more do not let the vibe of the old school record store go by the wayside tell the owner randy ringer that music mania sent you and he will give you a discount or it's on us cd warehouse gladstone missouri a staple of the northland for 22 years steve stevens man how's it going welcome back to the show it's been a while it's been like a year and a half since we had you on man how's everything been going right yeah good good all good man well, we're about to be really good here in Kansas City. You're going to be coming to see us here um, on September 21st, man. The, the tour picks back up here, I believe, next week. Got a got about another week off, and the tour picks back up, and you'll be here in Kansas City on the 21st, man. We can't wait to have you. I believe this is the first Billy Idol headlining performance here in over 10 years. I think it's been 13 years. Really? Yeah. Wow. All right. <laughs> yeah. Not that I'm counting. Not that anyone's counting, but I think it was Devil's Playground Tour, so it has been a minute, man. Awesome. Great. Yeah, looking forward to it. Well, how you guys have been touring pretty relentlessly here the last couple of years? A lot of a lot of one offs, a lot of a lot of weekend dates, and a lot of over, overseas touring. Just talk about what this tour's been like, how everything's been going, and uh, what the shows have been like so far. Yeah, great. Yeah, we uh, we just finished uh, you know about 
two months in Europe, and uh, we uh, it was pretty amazing. You know, in Europe, you get to do a lot of festival shows, and you get to see a lot of your other friends, and bands, and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's pretty awesome. You know, we, had, we for the last two years, we were doing our res- residency in Vegas, and it's it's great and everything, but you you know, it, 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 it's it's always great to you know travel the world and get to see some other places and stuff. Well, we're talking now, not to date anyone here, Steve, but my goodness, 36 years, uh, your collaboration now with Billy Idol, it's its really unbelievable. Uh, at least that's since the release of the first album, the debut in 1982. Just talk, right, about yeah. what, talk about what this collaboration has meant to you, how it's lasted this long. I mean, it's not it's, it's rare in this business um, for, for collaborations like this to last, last this long. How have you made it happen? And just kind of talk about your relationship with Billy and what, what it's all been like. Yeah, I mean, it's you, know, you certainly never, you know, when, I, when we met, we certainly never said, okay, we're gonna we're gonna do this for the next thirty six years. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, but um, you know, it comes from from respect and and um, and mutual admiration and just you, you know, if you really enjoy what you're doing, you know, it's uh, you, you, you know, time goes by. You know, it's not like you know you 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 really. It's not a real effort, you know, to work with somebody that you genuinely like and you, and you, you know, we get on stage and there's a certain, you know, I don't know, man, there's like another element in the room beyond us and you, you, you know, it's just like, you know, you find that, that one person you work with in, in your business or no matter what you do and you kind of, you know, you go, yeah, man, well, I'm, I'm in the right place, <laughs> you know. Absolutely, and, and talk about the rest of the touring band because a lot of these guys have been around. Uh, um, you know, you talk about guys like Stephen McGrath, Billy Morrison, Eric Eldenius, uh, Pat Trudeau. This is a really great version of this band right now. Just talk about some of these guys and how you guys are all melding together. Yeah, well, um, McGrath has been, you know, he's the second eldest <laughs> uh, uh, seniority member here. You know, um, you know, he's been with 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 us for. Uh, almost 20 years um and then uh billy morrison i met through working with uh uh royal machines which is the all-star band that he does with dave navarro and a bunch of other cast of characters um and uh and eric aldinas actually was suggested by our long-term producer keith forsey and keith's a drummer himself so if if he recommends a drummer, you know the guy's going to be great, you know, and Eric is great, and, you know, uh, Paul Trudeau as well as our keyboard player. You know, I mean, a, a big part of it is, is you, you know, you, you, you're only on stage for, you know, two and a half hours out of the, out of the touring day and the rest of it, you better, you better like these guys, yeah. you better be able to get along and, you know, and that's, uh, you know, that's a key ingredient, you know, we all like it enjoy being together and and, and 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 traveling together so um you know man I'm, I'm i'm very fortunate that uh you know i'm in a band with people i really like right. well the last time we talked to you steve you're getting ready to embark on a, an overseas solo tour uh back in the spring of 2017 just kind of want to revisit that um how everything went how how you much you enjoyed that kind of how the, those shows went and uh if something like that might be you know on the table here in the future yeah, it was pretty wild actually because I dusted off a lot of old gems that I hadn't uh, played in a long time. We, we, you know, we did "Dirty Diana," the tune that I, 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 you know, I, I did with uh, Michael Jackson, and uh, we did a couple of Atomic Playboys tunes that, you know, actually sounded really fresh, and people were like, really knocked out that 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 uh, you know they got to see that stuff. And uh, Frankie Perez, the singer that I I toured with, was just just incredible you know and i said it i said it before the tour i you know I, you know i told people i said man you're gonna come come see this band because my name's up there but you're gonna walk away talking about frankie and they you know sure sure as hell they did you know so it was it was really cool you know half of the show was flamenco and i had ben woods who's a phenomenal flamenco guitar player so it had a you know i had a uh you know obviously a, a kind of shred guitar element to it but you know, we had Gus G with us, and um, but it was also really musical. You know, if if I'm going to shred, I'm going to do it in a way that's not, you know, people don't feel like they have to hold up scorecards or something.
something, you know. I try and make it as musical as possible. Absolutely. I, I remember throwing out there, I was like, we've got to hear Atomic Playboys out there, and uh, it came to fruition. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take credit for that. No, no we like, <laughs> I, I love that. I love the Atomic Playboys album. I love Perry McCarty's vocal work on that. I love that, uh, that album. I mean, it's one of those ones that just, I, I, I'm a huge fan of it. I mean, go, kind of go back to that. What, talk about at that time, you know, you'd been with Billy Idol a few years, you'd done some big tours and big albums with, with him. Uh, and, and then and then that came along. Just talk about that Atomic Playboys album and kind of how it came came to be, and and and, and why it didn't um, you know occur beyond that album in 1989. Yeah, I mean it was you know I, I you know record companies started came a calling <laughs> you know and uh, you know because I wasn't signed to a deal and uh, you know people by then said hey you know Billy Idol's guitar player uh, so and so. Um, and uh, I was signed to Warner Brothers, actually, by Ted Templeman, who's the producer of Van Halen. And Ted and I got along great. And, you know, it was great that I was given the opportunity to, to, to do that record. Um, you know, I kind of lost, lost um, you know, my enthusiasm for working on the Billy Idol stuff because with Blast Smile, you know, was created largely with the you know, drum machines and bass sequencers and stuff like that. And, and uh, it was really hard for me to to um, kind of fit my guitars with that record. Although, you know, I like that record. And, uh, but it was just, a, you know, it was a, a direction that I kind of went, oh, well, maybe I want to do more of a rock and roll thing, you know. And and uh, I left under very good terms and it was not, you know, it was no animosity or anything. It was like, I'm going to go do my thing for a little bit and, you know, I'll see you, I'll see you on, the, on the rebound kind of thing. And... and um, so, you know, I did Atomic Playboys with Warner Brothers and, um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it, you know, the, the same reason why I'm still with Billy Idol is why that was like a short lived, um, uh, live situation. You know, I missed having that, that chemistry with that, as I said, you know, with, with, with the guy that, you know, that I had found and, um, I found it very hard on stage, you know, as, as good as Perry was and as hard as he worked at it, it I couldn't recreate that magic, and um, and I kind of, you know, went, hmm, something's not right here, you know. Uh, Steve, of all the things you've done, I mean, from you know, recording the, the Top Gun anthem for the hit movie Top Gun to working with Michael Jackson and working with Billy Idol, Sebastian Box, uh, doing your own work, uh, Flamenco A Go Go, and some of your uh, amazing guitar work. You're so versatile, of course. Is there something that, that just kind of stands out to you that is just almost surreal that, that you've done or accomplished? Or is it just kind of like, hey, I'm a guitarist, this is what I do, and it's just kind of business-like? What's what's kind of your, your take on, on your career and some of your big highlights? Yeah, I mean, the thing I'm, I'm, I'm most proud of is still working with Billy Idol after all these years. And as you said, it's so rare in our business. Uh, you know, you hit records come and go and, and all of that stuff, but to have a long-lasting career with somebody that you, you know, you genuinely, uh, you know, like and, and we have a blast on stage. Um, and, you know, obviously, uh, you know, winning a Grammy for best instrumental performance, you know, something that, you know, you sit in your room as a little kid while your friends are out playing ball and, and having fun and stuff, and you're in there trying to, you know, learn to track off, uh, you know, a, a yes record or something that's going to take you the next, you know, three weeks, uh, you know, to finally get recognition and, and uh, you know, that it kind of paid off was... You know, that was pretty sweet. You know, it was pretty pretty nice to know. And uh, um, I don't know if you're aware that they're, they're uh, shooting Top Gun 2 now. And yeah. I've, already, I've already been in touch with Harold Voltaire, who's uh, been brought back in to do the score again. So, lo and behold, here we go. <laughs> wow. I, I, that, that's, that's a bombshell for me as I, that's like one of my favorite movie theme songs of all time so I I knew they were getting this all together I can't imagine that's a kind of a recreation I mean how you know they re-record you know music for, for newer movies or sequels or reboots they always want to mess with it or, or make it different I mean what do you how do you see it playing out is it going to kind of be a recreation I, 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 you know you're, you're, your guess is as good as mine <laughs> I just you know I put you know I just said hey man you know I mean what, what's great about it is that they would bring Harold back to do the score that that shows that they're doing the right thing you know and um, and I just you know uh, I said whatever you need you know as I said uh, to Harold 
you know, whatever it was, 34 years ago when I, you know, played on the first one. Whatever you need, man. <laughs> and that's, <laughs> you know, and, that, and that's usually what I say to people that ask me to, you know, play on a track or something or work. You know, it's like, hey, man, you know, well, you, you know, it's their baby, and, and you kind of go, yeah, what, you know, what do you, what do you need? I'll do it. <laughs> well, I, I think what's interesting about you, and you've said in interviews before that you, you know, really grew up. Uh, playing a lot of acoustic guitar that um, by the time you got your electric guitar, you were very, very much immersed in, in the acoustic guitar world, you know, the Joni Mitchells, those kind of, that kind of music. Just talk about your evolution as a guitarist from, from playing the acoustic guitar to getting your first electric and then into all the styles that you do. I mean, from the flamenco to the Spanish styles, to all, all that, all those things. Like, is that something you just sort of, you know, pick up along the way? How did your style kind of evolve over the years? Well, you know, I mean, I was, you know, I was born at the for, for a guitar player, man. I was born in the heyday of guitar exploration. You know, early seventies English rock guitar playing was what was what was you know it was it was like you, you know the, the best time. And um, you know, I started on acoustic, and I don't think people realize how popular uh, you know acoustic music was at that time with Crosby, Stills, Nash, and before, you know, before even Neil Young joined, Johnny Mitchell, James Taylor, Seals and Crofts, Jim Croce, you know, Cat Stevens, this, this kind of music was, was huge, and for me as a, as a kid picking up the guitar, you know, it was, it was easy to make what, what you heard on the record come alive, you know, you didn't, you didn't need a big amp or the pedals or all this stuff so I was quite happy you know playing along on my acoustic guitar until I was 13 and got an electric guitar and that coincided with the early English progressive rock guys like uh, King Crimson Genesis yes and and, um, and those guitar players in those kind of bands were utilizing every style of guitar acoustic classical flamenco um uh, you know, electric, obviously, you know, psychedelic, and so it was, you know, it was like a big gumbo of guitar stew, <laughs> and eventually out of that, you know, um, came the kind of New York, you know, uh, by the time I moved to Manhattan, was like the New York, uh, you know, early new wave, whatever you want to call it, you know, Ramones had already hit, but now we had television and talking heads, and and Robert Fripp from King Crimson had moved to New York, and so you know there was like there was continued exploration. Guitar was still exciting, and and um, so I had all this technique from the prog stuff, and then I was like, okay, how do I make it unique? And then that's exactly when I met Billy Idol, and we kind of he turned me on to a lot of the interesting English guitar players that I wasn't aware of, and uh, and that kind of, you know, you mix all this stuff together, and you kind of get get what I play like. <laughs> sure. <laughs> well, that, that is, uh, that, that's awesome, and I mean, you've always been, uh, you're a true innovator, and, and have done so many great things. Uh, you know, one thing I do want to mention is that um, there are uh, meet and greets available for the upcoming The Billy Idol Tour. You can get, not only meet Billy Idol, but you, Steve, that's a, that's a, that's a quite an added bonus there. You get to meet both of you guys if you uh, buy the meet and greet package. Uh, what's that like? I mean, I know... I've always wondered, you know, from an artist's perspective, you know, what it's like, a, you know, you're every show, you're going to meet a certain amount of people, you got to meet a lot of people. Is it, is it a, is it a gratifying experience? Is it something that's kind of hard to get through? You got to meet a lot of people, shake a lot of hands. Um, I know it's big for, for fans. It's one of those deals where it's like, it's something that you'll never remember, but it's something they'll never forget. And I know that's something you guys always keep in mind. No, it's, it's, it, I mean, what's great is that we span generations now and, uh, I have so many, uh, <clears throat> you know, parents that bring their kid that's playing guitar now, and they want to, they you know, they, you know, the dad or the mom say, yeah, this is this is the guitar player I grew up with, you know, and but but but, but uh, you know, it's it's great to um to see kids that want to play guitar, obviously, and uh and um and encourage them, you know, like 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 uh you know people did for me. And um, and answer questions, you know, questions they have about playing guitar or whatever. And um, so it's it, it's cool. I mean, Billy Idol fans, there is no one kind of Billy Idol fan. 
you know, so it doesn't it never gets boring, and it's always pretty pretty interesting, and and uh, it's great to to meet some some you know really dedicated fans, you know, hopefully give them something back. Well, the tour runs uh, here for uh, for another little while up until uh, the early fall. Kind of set the stage for us. Uh, you know what's next uh, coming into 2019 for for Billy for you. What what do you got coming up, and uh, what can we talk about? Um, well, Billy and I just uh, finished um, doing a, a remix of Money Money for an album of remixes uh, with lots of uh, current guys. You know, Moby and uh, Paul Oakenfell. I mean, all these kind of remix people are kind of. Uh, you know, having their way with our music, which is kind of cool. Um, so there's a remix record coming out, and uh, and then there's a couple of things that uh, uh, there's a project I'm involved in, and I can't say. Unfortunately, I can't say too much about it, but uh, I'm, I'm excited about it, and hopefully, people will know about it in a couple of months or so. And and then uh, new Mil- Billy Idol music as well. We plan on. Uh, on uh, uh, writing some new tunes, uh, you know, after this uh, upcoming tour. Oh, cannot wait for that! It's been uh, it's been four years since the last uh, studio release from Billy. Can't wait for the remix album. It's funny you mention that because the other guest on this podcast is Tommy James, Tommy James and the Shondells, uh, of course. Wow. The, yeah, wow. man, huge fan of his. Uh, it's funny. I'm gonna check. To, I'm gonna be seeing Tommy James on the uh, fifth, the fifteenth, and then Billy Idol on the on the twenty first. So I'm gonna get my fill of Money Money for sure. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh, yeah. man. Fantastic. Um, before I let you go, Steve, I just got to ask, you know, we've talked a lot about Billy, your collaboration, but to me, when you look at, at what this guy's done and his performances, I mean, Billy, now now in his 60s, to be putting on the kind of performances that he does, to have the vo- the voice that he still does, the look that he does, I don't know if there's any other artist that, that the look and, and the way he looks and the way he presents himself is more important, and yet there he is. I mean, he was in The Wedding Singer 15 years after his first album came out, looking like he did when his first album came out. Talk about <laughs> him, his performances, how he's able to do this, because I'm, I'm always in awe of everything he does. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, he... he um He's really, really dedicated to, to you know, um, not letting the fans down, you know, he, he, you know, uh, and, and that requires, you know, a diet and exercise, and I mean, that's, you know, it's one of the reasons I have such respect for him as well, because, you know, he feels that he never wants to be that guy that people you know, come and, and see and go, ah, you know, uh, maybe you should hang it up or whatever. You know, it's like, um, he takes it really seriously, man. It's like, you know, he really cares about those two hours that are on stage and make sure that people feel feel good about themselves and feel good about what we're doing. And um, I can't stress that enough, you know. Awesome. Well, Steve, I tell you what, we can't thank you enough uh, for joining us. We'll be sure uh, anything you ever have to, to promote or talk about, we'd be glad to help out, man. So best of luck with everything you got going on this year. We will see you, my friend, on the 21st here in Kansas City at the Uptown Theater. Thanks so much for joining yeah, us, man. Forward, looking forward to it. Oh, can't wait. Uh, it's it's going to be going to be a great one. Thanks so much, and we'll catch up soon, my friend. Okay, thank you. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Huge thanks to Steve Stevens for joining us once again. That's the second time we've had him on this podcast. Very down-to-earth guy. Love talking to him about his time in Billy Idol. The Lost Album, if you will. I'm such a huge fan of his album, the Atomic Playboys album from 1989. Uh, It's just, it's iconic in so many ways. It's one of those ones I discovered watching like a video fanzine from back in the day. And I saw this, uh, this song, this video for the title track, Atomic Playboys. And I've just, uh, had to immediately find that album. And I've just been a big fan of everything Steve's done from his flamenco guitar playing Spanish style, his acoustic stuff. And he's just a monster as the guitarist for Billy Idol. And we're going to be checking that show out on September 21st at the Uptown. So be sure to check out Steve's website, stevestevens.bigcartel.com. Uh, got a lot of cool stuff you can buy, uh, whether it be guitar equipment, uh, t-shirts, things like that. Go check it out. And now we want to go ahead and welcome our second guest here on the Music Mania podcast. Joining us from Germany, Udo Dirk Schneider. Udo, welcome to the show. I know you're excited. You've got this new album, Steel Factory, out. What's been the reception been like for that? And it's got to be a really exciting time for you. 
Yeah, I mean, the response so far is very, very good. I did a lot of interviews already, and everybody likes the album. So, what can I say? I'm really happy about this. You have said before that it is very important for you to, to keep touring and to keep making albums, because you said if, if you didn't do that, you'd just be bored. <laughs> so, how do you, is, is that true? You love making albums. You, it's really important to you, isn't it, to keep, to keep making new music? Yeah, of course. I mean, you know, especially after the Dirk Schneider thing that we did nearly for three years and nearly 300 shows, I mean. So we did the new album in between uh, the Dirk Schneider touring. Yeah, and it was uh, uh, in uh, easy working, you know, we did it uh, this time a little bit different. We we went uh, after the first uh, US tour for two weeks in the studio, rehearsal room, jamming and uh, getting all through the ideas and so. And it was really creative and also like a teamwork, you know. So and I think uh, in a way you can hear the result on a new album. Well, talk about this because your son, Sven, your son Sven, is playing drums with you now. Uh, talk about yes. what that's like to be uh, recording and touring with your son, who's doing a great job. He's a really good drummer, isn't he? Yeah, I mean, so now he's uh, already uh, three years in the band, and he's getting better and better. And for him, it was a really a challenge now to uh, record a, a whole album, you know. And I think he did a great job on this album, and it's a lot of fun to 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 have him in a band. I mean, it's not like a real father and son thing, you know. It's more like a like a being friends together. And yeah, it, uh, what can I say? I'm really proud of him, and um, I think they will get getting better and better well udo you have a big tour coming up uh, starting in october you're going to be heading to russia you've got shows yes. coming up in germany and prague this is a massive tour you guys are getting ready to do so a uh, little time off and then back on the road and some really big shows coming up you guys go to russia and germany you got to be excited about that yeah, I mean, so now we have two more shows with the Dirk Schneider thing in uh, Germany and in Spain. Uh, and then we start rehearsing for the tour. And then what you said already, then we start touring in, in Russia for a couple of weeks. And then we have a short break until well, the middle of January next year. And then we start a European tour. You're, so just the first date, the first dates are uh, already on our website. And... Uh, um, yeah, there will be a long uh, European tour coming up. Uh, I think what I heard until the beginning of uh, April. Yeah, and then so what I also uh, know that they are working on the next American tour with UDO. Maybe we do this directly after the uh, uh, European tour or after the summer. Well, well, that's great to hear. I know you toured here uh, uh, as Dirk Schneider back in uh, February uh, yes. on, on, into last spring. What are, what are the, what were those American and North American shows like? Do you do you feel like the American fans are are just as rabid and just as excited as as uh, some of the fans overseas? Yeah, I mean, I mean, of course, with Dirk Schneider, it was a, diff, a little bit different. I mean, we just uh, was playing except songs, but I mean, I was already with uh, two times with uh, with UDO in 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 the US, and uh, it worked very well. I mean, uh, I mean, it's a big country, and you have to work, come over and over again, and touring and show the people what the band is like. Well, I tell you what. Udo, you have done some uh, some so many great things and done duets and sang with so many great artists. You've uh, you know d contributed to bands like Lordy. But one of my favorite things is the yeah. the duet you've uh, you did uh, with uh, Doro Pesh uh, in 2008 yeah. at Wacken. Talk about her and, and kind of your relationship. Both both German born oh. singers. She's great, man. She's been on the show yeah. before. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we we uh, we know each other for I don't know, <laughs> long long time. You know, the the beginning of the eighties, and uh, yeah, I mean, Doro is always nice. She she she's doing a very good job, you know, and uh, she's keep she also keep going on and on. And I think for a woman, <clears throat> don't get me wrong, but I think it's a little bit harder than for a man, you know, to be in this business and do that so long. What she's doing, but um, yeah, chapeau, she's. Doing Doing a good job. Now, one of the other only bands, you know, uh, based from Germany, that's kind of uh, in in your league, that's been around as much as you guys, uh, is is the Scorpions. Uh, talk about them. They're yes. right in your same age group. Uh, they came out, man, in the late '60s, and here we are. Uh, they're still going strong. I mean, it's great to see that the Scorpions. Just unbelievable. Klaus Mine just turned 70 years old. He's just tremendous. Yeah. 
Well, yeah, absolutely, and it, it's so wonderful to to have you out there. And I, you know, it's funny because uh, Rudolph Shanker uh, from the Scorpions just had a, had a child a few years ago. Uh, at, at your age, yes. he was sixty six and had a child. Would that would that be something that you would you want to have another one of those? <laughs> I don't. Uh, I don't. I don't really uh, think so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, just, I have two kids. Yeah, you, I mean, you, you I have two kids now. They're old enough, you know. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, um, Udo, one thing that's uh, always interested me about you is you talked about uh, your upbringing, as you were very had a very musical upbringing, but you were more interested in uh, playing keyboards early in in life. Talk about your love for for that instrument, playing keyboards, and then what led you to uh, become a singer. Oh, a long time ago. I mean, I started with keyboards and uh, was making music together with Michael Wagner, you know. He was playing guitar. Yeah, and then, uh, I don't know, I think I was not really good enough on, on keyboards, you know. And for me, it was like more fun to sing. So, and then I switched over just to sing and, and uh, let the keyboard to keyboard. <laughs> so, I mean, still, I can, I mean, if I have some ideas, I can do that on the keyboard, you know. But in, in a way that I know what's going on you know <laughs> maybe some people not but for me it's like okay i can make a melody and then i'm, I'm fine with that well your voice is very distinct and you always say that you you know you don't uh, there's really nothing that you do to keep it in shape you don't do a lot of warm-ups you go on stage and you just go with it how did you discover uh, your distinct voice? Is it something you had to kind of work on? You know, we talked about Ronnie James Dio, another singer that doesn't, they just didn't have to do warm ups. He got on stage and did it. How did you find your voice uh, when you were, you know, becoming uh, becoming a singer in bands? Yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people told me, you know, when we, when, when I start uh, uh, being in like a hobby school band and stuff like that, they always came up with that, your voice is something different, you know, and uh, getting really high and uh, it's like, um, yeah, it's like more screaming, you know, and uh, yeah, and then a lot of people say what I said before just uh, do it and this is this voice is unique you know so and I think they were right they were right well Udo with your last uh, Dirk Schneider tour uh, you basically um, it was a part of your career where you were said kind of farewell to uh, the accept songs um, yes how, how do you feel about that is that something that you, you feel good about that you were able to give those songs one last one last time and now you're able to move on you have so much material with you know UDO that it's got to be you know it's got it's easy for you to move on because you have so many songs in your catalog as it is right yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I mean, I always was playing also except songs, you know, with UDO before. So and then uh, after all this uh, the touring now with Dirk Schneider, I think I gave the chance to everybody to listen this to the for the last time. And uh, I think, I mean, now we have I have sixteen albums out with UDO, and we we already have also some uh, uh, really classic songs with UDO, you know. And I mean, I think we can make up a really really good sadness without uh, any uh, except song but i mean i mean if somebody wants to hear except songs i mean please go to accept they're still, <laughs> they're still touring they're still existing and um, yeah i mean uh, mark is not a bad singer he can do that and uh, okay the sound is maybe a little bit different but uh, you hear the songs and uh, for me it's like um, I always say when people ask me, oh, you really never, never, ever play uh, Accept songs again. And I said, okay, there's a little door open. If Accept split up or stop making music and I'm still in the business, touring, whatever, then there's a chance that I come up again with some Accept songs. But at the moment, definitely not. Well, are there some songs uh, from Steel Factory that you're you're looking forward to playing live in the in the UDO set? Oh. I mean, 
So yeah. many blood, I, blood on fire, rising high, hungry and angry. There's so many great songs. How are you going to pick which ones to play? How, how many new ones are you going to try to throw in there for this next tour? Uh, at the moment, we, we, we was already making up a, a list with songs what we maybe have to play uh, on, uh, on the UDO uh, tour. So I think there will be definitely six, seven songs of, of the new album. So, But we will see when we start rehearsing all these songs, you know, then in a way you get a feeling for it, what is, what is, what is working live, you know. Well, Udo, you've had such a prolific and, and long career and, and I just kind of want to ask you about you know other bands uh, that you've toured with because I know back in 1981 uh, you toured with Judas Priest and that was a big uh, a big help for for accept yeah. kind of gaining acceptance I mean other than that tour with Priest talk about other bands you know that you've toured with uh, kind of early on or, or even recently that you know that you've enjoyed touring with and, and, and that maybe helped you guys along early on. Yeah, that was definitely, I mean, also before UDO, you know, when I started with UDO in 87, and, uh, uh, so then I was uh, together on tour with Guns N' Roses, they was helping me a lot, you know, especially in America, and then I was with UDO on tour in Europe, it was the Osborne in 89, and yeah, I mean, uh, so then I was keep going on as, as a headliner here in, in, in Europe. I mean, for me it will be, Maybe it will help a little bit in America to go on tour with a bigger band, you know, as a package. But we will see what's coming up. I don't know. Well, you guys have played so many big festivals, especially in oh, Europe. Yeah. What is that like whenever you, you know, is there a difference when you when you go play a big festival like that and you've got 40,000 people and it's just such a big deal, especially festivals like uh, Vakken and things like that? What's what's yes. the feeling playing those big festivals? That's got to be just a wonderful feeling for you guys. Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, if, if you do a festival, you know, uh, I mean, you have definitely to change the, the set list. It doesn't matter that except or UDO. Then you have to play the most known songs and they can sing along it's more like a party going on on festivals you know it's a, it's a, it's a different than if you're doing uh, uh, shows in, in 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 halls or smaller clubs whatever you know that, that you can do a little bit different but on festivals there's a big party going on and then play the most known songs if you what you can well, absolutely, guys. You can go to udoonline.com to see all the tour dates and order the new yes. album, Steel Factory. It is tremendous. Udo, we hope that we get you guys uh, back in America here coming up, and I will be definitely coming to see you when you do that. So best of luck on this tour. The oh. album is awesome, and we can't thank you enough, Udo. Great stuff. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, bye-bye. We'll talk soon. Bye. -bye. bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. I'll tell you what, that was awesome for me. First time ever interviewing Udo Dirk Schneider, and uh, as – big of a fan of accept and, and UDO that I am. Um, that was really special to talk to him about, uh, the other German bands that, uh, that he's often compared to, uh, the Scorpions. Of course, he has a great relationship with Doro Pesch, who's uh, been on this show before. So, wow, this is catapulting us into the fall of 2018. So many shows left to get out there and review. I've got Scorpions coming up in Dallas um, on Sunday. And I've got Judas Priest coming to town here in Kansas City September the 18th. And I've got that Billy Idol show September 21st. And we also mentioned, uh, you know, with, with Steve Stevens, next week on this show, we've got All-American, the legendary, golden voice, Tommy James, uh, Tommy James and the Shondells going to be joining us and talking about uh, his upcoming tour. It's going to be hitting Branson, Missouri coming up on September 14th. I'm going to be hitting that show up the day before the Alabama Ole Miss game in Oxford, Mississippi. Things are crazy for me right now and I love it. I'm going to be out there doing all this stuff, bringing you guys these interviews. It's all coming up. James Kotak, drummer from Kingdom Come, uh, formerly of the Scorpions, going to be joining us coming up on a future episode as well. So keep it here on the Music Mania Podcast. We'll see you next week with Tommy James.